praise the Lord, mightiest prophet of the Lord. Amen, Pastor Faustin. Well, uh, Jehovah has spoken with me, and that is why I'm coming to you live now, that your listeners may know world over, your global listenership, the listeners in this country, those in the islands, the continents, and everywhere across this globe. The Lord spoke with me yesterday in a very tremendous dream. And in this conversation, the Lord spoke to me about events about to happen. And I know that right now we are sitting at a very, very powerful threshold. The revival has blasted out in this land. And uh, the visitation of the Lord is so big in the house of the Lord. And yesterday, the Lord has moved this a little bit further now. And uh, it took me to a place where I stood. And then he showed me the realm of the dead, the realm of death. She all the realm of death. And inside that realm of death, he showed me a young man that will die and is wearing a whitish shirt. I can see his shirt is whitish. And then he dies and he goes into the realm of death. The world of the dead, so to say, so called. And then after that, the Lord causes me to call him back to life. And then he instantly resurrects. And when he resurrects and he comes to me, then I'm able now to speak with him and tell him that you see now, you have now not died. Live to glorify the Lord Jesus with your life. So I see another resurrection, a tremendous resurrection that will take place. It looks like uh, the Lord is going to use his servant to again resurrect another body, a dead body. But this time I see a young man is wearing a white shirt. I don't know whether it's dotted with small flowers in there because I can see some details. And it's not tucked in. And then he dies. And then the Lord sends his servant, the mighty yes prophet, to resurrect him and then calls him out from the realm of the dead and then gives him back his life. And then a tremendous celebration breaks out. This can only tell me that the Lord is going to escalate the current revival that has begun. We are now celebrating the big, big, big resurrection of Mama Rosa from South Fork Court, the one that the Lord resurrected in a powerful way. And when you see at that moment when she was resurrected, you see that uh, as she resurrects, her hands are still stuck together and stiff. The hands that were as stiff as wood that uh, the daughter and the husband were trying to fold back, but stiff. So the hands were still as stiff as wood. And you see even from her eyes and her face when she had just come from the dead. And it's such a tremendous sight to behold at this hour. It is also very humbling to be the generation that lives to see these wonder workings of God that spell, that define the dispensational threshold we are, we are living in today on the verge of eternity for the coming of the Messiah. So I see again another resurrection. The Lord will send me to a place. He sends his servant there and he resurrects a young man. He, he, I think he's uh, somebody, probably his 20s or so. And he wears a white shirt, but it's dotted. I see some fine detail. I don't know whether dotted with blue, dark, navy blue flowers or so forth. But such that it's still white. Small, small uh, decorations within the white, untucked. And the Lord causes his servant to call him from the realm of the dead and to call him back and give him back his life. So it's going to be a very tremendous time in the history of the church. This is going to change the landscape in the church totally. And the narrative of the Christian worship experience, even as we now veer this home stretch, veer into this home stretch towards the coming of the Messiah and the eternity of the church. But this also has reminded me of yet another prophecy I gave last year, when the Lord last year again spoke with me, 
And in that conversation, it takes me to a place where a, a little child dies. A child dies, I think, for about seven or so. And then that child, I think, is in the coffin. I don't know whether it's in the coffin. The child dies, and then the Lord sends his servants there to resurrect this child. And then this child, when the man of God gets close to the child, then the child coughs. And I think that prophet is on YouTube. We put it already on the web. The child coughs and comes back to life. And then there is now the second prophecy last year on the resurrection is a man. And I'm wondering whether this is the man that I saw then that the Lord has brought forward here. But this tells us that uh, time is over, and uh, as the body of Christ, the Church of Christ, world over, it is really the moment for us to embrace righteousness, to embrace holiness, to make amends on our way, to now live a clear and holy Christian lifestyle, a life of fasting, to change our dressing, the women, the men, even our stance what sin at this moment the lord is using these events to trumpet and evangelize the fact that there has to be zero tolerance to sin because they're on the verge of eternity the lord is speaking in very very clear terms to the church of christ world over he's saying the messiah is coming the signs are here and this is he about whom it was written in scripture that see i send my messenger ahead of you to prepare your way before the day of the Lord. So at this hour, all people are very much aware that the Lord is calling the nations to repentance. He is calling the church to repentance. He is calling the pulpit to repentance and reform their ways and preach the standard threshold gospel, the gospel that the Lord gave us as the standard the gospel of holiness, to help the people under their jurisdiction as pastors, as shepherds, that they may build forth a people unto the Lord. Again, the Lord yesterday spoke with me about a young man, but he's going to rob a man. And this, I don't know when it will take place. All I know is that right now, we have just begun the major, 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 major celebration on the resurrection of Rosa, when the Lord put deep compassion and sorrow in my heart upon receiving that text from the husband that she had passed on, she'd lost her breath, and she was gone. And then the Lord said, it is well. Now you can be at peace. In other words, I have taken charge. I've taken authority over this now. You can wait. All is going to be well. And then she coughs and sneezes, and resurrect. So the, the, this is big. This is very big for the church to live to see this dispensation. And I know that this past weekend, the whole nation of Kenya was set ablaze, literally set aflame, set alight by the flames of the glory of the Lord, the resurrection glory of Jesus. And like has been said, these flames are meant to incinerate, to burn to completion the sinful affections of men, the sinful affections of their hearts, and to really conform them to the image and the likeness of God. We all know too well that even as the flames that were consuming the bush, it consumed the bush when the Lord called Moses. And that the Lord did speak so much about that when he was calling Moses. And at that time, the Lord Jehovah essentially implied that this latter glory of revival, he foretold it in that flame, the burning bush, that this latter glory of the latter revival, that the church, you the church would contain, you would carry this flame the dreadful flames of the Holy Spirit, and yet you would not be consumed. So Revelation 21.3 says, Behold, the dwelling of God is now man. 
So that calls for holiness, righteousness. It is a high standard for the church. I have seen the Messiah coming, and now the Lord has shown me that there is going to be this escalation of the revival that he has initiated, and I've seen a place he's sending me to, and there will be a resurrection of a young man. I've seen the resurrection of baby of a baby that will come up, also coughs and resurrects. So may those who have ears know that this is the hour to prepare the way and that this is the voice crying out in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Be holy. And utterly for sin. And great righteousness. And live a separated life. Remember, I taught it too well from her thinking. When I say it, good intention or any irreverent act or any act that assumes ignorance on the ordinances of the Lord can never in any way consecrate a sinful act. Cannot consecrate sin. So let us just stick to righteousness, to holiness, and have zero tolerance to sin. May the Lord bless you as you prepare for the glorious coming of the Messiah. I bless the Church of Christ world over. I now have received a huge invitation from the Church in the United States of America, and I am now asking the Lord to give his leading on this, and I know in the next two days, but I can see that there is a greater hunger. This revival that broke out in Kenya is beyond the borders of Kenya. Every nation is going to take of this visitation. May the Lord bless you. Shalom. Thank you.